Welcome to Primary Sabbath School. This is so different from how we usually meet, where you walk in the Sabbath School door and we sing some songs with Mr. Tucker and we put on our dress up clothes and we get all excited learning about God's Word together. But you know it's still the same? It's still the Sabbath day. It's still me. It's still you. And it doesn't matter where we are, if we set aside time to spend with Jesus, Jesus is still with us. That's really all that matters, right? So I would like you to join me and a couple of helpers in practicing our memory verse for this week. And after the memory verse, I have a really cool story and then a quiz. So stay with me. We got a bunch of things to do and we're gonna get them done really quick. Okay, so I have my primary helpers here and we're gonna practice our memory verse, Malachi and Lucia and us and you. And I want to hear you. You were not together, so you really got to let me hear you, okay? So I'm going to put it up on the screen, and we're going to read it together, okay? Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. John 3, 14. 13, 14. John 13, 14. I know that you guys are all good readers. But are you good memorizers? Let's see. I'm going to click ahead and you won't see some of the words. I'm going to take them away and see if you can remember what it said. Let's try it. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. John 13, 14. Oh. That wasn't that hard, was it? Should I take out some more words? Yeah. Yeah, you got it? So. Oh my goodness, we took out a lot of words. All right, let's try it again. Now, now that I, I your, your Lord, Lord and teacher, teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. John 13, 14. Can we take out some more? You think? Let's do it. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. John 13, 14. Okay, I think you guys are doing good. Can we go even further? Oh boy, oh, oh boy. No. Okay, I want to hear you nice and strong. Now, now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. John 13, 14. Oh, you guys are ready. Are you ready for the next one? It's all gone. There's nothing left. Yes, it is. Where is it now? In my brain. And where else is it? In, in our heart. heart. And that's where we have to, that's where my, it has to go. In my stomach. Mom. We have to eat it. Sometimes they talk about scripture like eating God's word. It means putting it into your body so that no matter if you don't have your Bible, if you don't have your iPad or your computer, you still know. Yes, he did that. Oh boy, I hope I didn't make you guys forget. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, now, go. Now you made us. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. John 13, 14. Give yourself a pat Hey, okay, boys and girls. Today's story has to do with the memory verse that we just practiced. And the memory verse was about washing one another's feet. And so I know you know this story. But we have some cool little facts that I want you to be listening for because there's going to be a quiz at the end. And last week, Miss Nicole was talking about Zacchaeus. What a cool story it was that a man like Zacchaeus, who had robbed and stolen, could be forgiven. And not only forgiven, but made a friend of God. And the story that we're actually getting ready to tell today leads up to the death of Jesus on the cross. And I don't know if you're like my kids, but my kids, they say, Mama, I love and I hate this story. And um, 
well, the story of Jesus dying on the cross. And I think most of us feel that way about the story of Jesus dying on the cross, but this story happened just a few days before, and um, it was a custom. What's a custom? A custom is something that people were used to doing. And the custom was that when somebody came to your house, you would greet them and you would treat your guests with special treatment. And when somebody came to your house in Bible times, they would sit them down and they would take off their shoes and they would begin to wash their feet. Now, why would they wash each other's feet? That's kind of something that we don't do outside of church. I have never washed the feet of someone who came to visit me. But I bet you can guess why they did that back then more than maybe we would do it now. And just like you saw in that little clip that I showed you, back in Bible times, they didn't drive around in cars, and they didn't have tennis shoes and socks, and they didn't have pavement. And without those three things, what did that add up to? Very dirty feet. Very dusty, dirty feet. And nothing feels better than to have your hot, sweaty, dirty feet washed in some nice, cool water. And that was what they were used to in, in, in Bible times. Um, it wasn't because feet stank more. It was just that they were out in the dust and the dirt more, and they, didn't, they just wore sandals. So knowing that and knowing that our story actually happens in springtime, it might have been in April. Some Bible scholars say April and some say late March. But just like it is right now. And... Um, Jesus and his disciples were walking to Jerusalem for a very special feast. It's called the Feast of Passover. Now, the Feast of Passover has to do, it's connected to a story we were just learning a few weeks ago about Moses and all the plagues. And I know that you remember the last plague. It was a terrible plague, but it was because Pharaoh had hardened his heart. You remember that phrase? And God had to reach his hard heart. And so an angel flew over Egypt. And any house that didn't have the blood on the doorpost, remember Mr. Tom put the blood on our doorpost? It was, it was really ketchup, but it, it reminds us of the blood on the doorpost. If there was blood, what did the angel do? Pass over that house. And the firstborn in that house was safe. And so every year, all the way through history, all the way to when Jesus came on earth, they celebrated Passover, the angel passing over the house and the safety of the firstborn. So Jesus was celebrating Passover. And it was a beautiful springtime. And they... He and his disciples found a great room, and they were going to get together. And we know about get-togethers, right? We've been talking a lot about not getting together. That's why we're meeting this way on the computer. But Jesus and his disciples were like us, and they like to eat together and sit around a table. And I think we're all planning a big party once all this quarantine is over and it's safe to be together again. Um, it will be fun to be back together. And that's what they were doing. They were getting together. But something was missing. Something very important was missing. When they came into the room and they sat down, nobody greeted them to wash their feet. Nobody was there. There was no servant. There was no helpers. So they all had stinky feet dirty, dusty feet from walking in sandals, and they were going to eat like that. And it was a little bit uncomfortable because they knew, kind of like we always wash our hands before we eat, they knew they really should have had their feet washed or washed their feet. Somebody, somebody should wash the feet. And they kind of looked around and said, well, I'm not going to do it. That's a servant's job. I'm not going to wash the, the these guys' feet, their feet are dirty, and I'm not a servant. 
so you know what happened. I think you remember this part. Who got up? Who took off his robe, maybe like his jacket? Who tied the towel around his waist? It was Jesus, wasn't it? Jesus took himself from being our God and our Messiah and our Savior, but he took himself all the way down to being like a servant. And he got the water and he came and he knelt down. Should the king ever kneel before his servants, before his subjects? No, the king never kneels before his subjects, but Jesus did. He knelt down, took one dirty foot, put it in the water and began to wash it. And just like the feet in our video, they were dirty feet. The water wasn't clean like it is at church when we wash feet. It was dirty and it probably smelled bad. But Jesus didn't say that. He took another foot and he washed it and he moved from disciple to disciple. That's a lot of feet. Do you remember how many disciples he had? Twelve. How many feet do each person have? Does each person have? Two. That's 24 feet. Well, one of his disciples named Peter said, Oh, oh no, you will never wash my feet. And he, he was probably embarrassed. He knew who Jesus was or he had an idea of who Jesus was, that he was our Messiah and our Savior. And who was he to be washing his feet? And Peter said, No. Peter said, you won't wash my feet. And Jesus said, now this is very important. If I don't wash your feet, then you are not one of God's children. You're not my child. You're not in my family. Oh, Peter thought. That's all Peter wanted. It was his heart's desire to be in God's family. And he said, well then, don't just wash my feet. Wash my head and my whole self. That's to say, that, that was Peter's way of saying, I want to be in your family, Jesus, more than anything. And so, of course, Jesus washed his feet. Jesus washed not only Peter's feet, but he washed Judas's feet later. And we know what Judas was going to do. And Jesus knew, Jesus knew that Judas was going to hurt his feelings and hurt him and betray him. And yet, he still washed Judas's feet that's a big lesson for us. Sometimes people hurt our feelings and we say, I will never do anything nice to that person again. Jesus knew that this man was about to hurt him and he knelt down on the floor in front of him and took his dirty feet in his hands and he washed his dirty feet. Jesus said, I'm going to tell you why I'm doing this. There's a reason. It wasn't because their feet were dirty. That wasn't the most important reason. Jesus said, I am doing this. Now listen, boys and girls. I am doing this to give you and me an example. I am doing this just like in our Bible verse, just like in our memory verse that we read. It said that Now, if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought, meaning you should, serve. Wash one another's feet. Pick up one another's toys. Help each other with your chores. Forgive each other. Because Jesus did it, and he gave us an example for how to serve one another. All right, let me make sure I didn't leave out any of the details because the quiz is next. First quiz question. Why did they wash feet in Jesus' day? Hold up one finger if you think it's because it felt good. Hold up two fingers if you think it was because they wore sandals and their feet were dusty. And hold up three fingers if you think it was because feet used to stink worse then than they do now. Hold your fingers up. And the answer is number two. Their feet were dusty from wearing sandals. Which disciple said, no, you won't wash my feet? One, if you think it was Peter. Hold up two, if you think it was John. And hold up three, if you think it was 
Judas. Hold your fingers up. 1 Peter 2 John 3 Judas. It wasn't John and it wasn't Judas. So one was the right answer. Third question. Why didn't the disciples wash each other's feet? Hold up one if you think it was because they were tired. Hold up two if you think they were social distancing. And hold up three if it was because washing feet was a servant's job. Hold your fingers up. It wasn't one and it wasn't two. Three was the right answer. Fourth question. Jesus told Peter he had to wash his feet because one, that was required to be one of God's children. Two, his feet were smelly. Three, he wanted to keep the house clean. What did Jesus say? Hold up your fingers. One, two, or three. Wasn't two, wasn't three, it was one again. Fifth question. The Passover feast was a celebration of God's deliverance from which Egyptian plague? Hold up one if it was the frogs. Hold up two if it was the water turning to blood. Hold up three if it was the death of the firstborn. Hold them up. Not one, not two, it was God's deliverance from the death of the firstborn. What time of year was Passover? Hold up one finger if you think it was in April or springtime. Hold up two fingers if you think it was in September or fall. And hold up three fingers if you think it was in January or winter. Hold them up. Not two, not three, one again. <laughs> okay, next question. Why did Jesus wash his disciples' feet? One, to give them and us an example of how to serve one another. Two, to make them feel bad for not serving. Or three, he had nothing better to do. Make your guess. Not two, not three. Man, Miss Lopez wasn't very creative. These are all number ones, but I don't think they'll stay that way. This is your choice. Pick at least one way you will serve your family like Jesus did. Will you, one, leave secret compliment notes around the house? Two, maybe help clean up someone else's mess? Or three, let everyone else go first? This is your choice and you get to decide. Maybe you'll do all three and follow Jesus' example. Thank you boys and girls for joining us for Sabbath School today.